next thing, uh, we want to talk about immigration. Uh, no, 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 no. Since we just talked about Atlanta, let's talk about uh, the Georgia. Uh, no, this is Colorado. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So yeah. Well, we talked about Atlanta before that, so let's transition from since it's still out, since this mass shooting happened in Atlanta. Let's talk about the Georgia politics where we just passed we right because yeah. obviously we're involved. We we wanted this um, where Georgia's the Republican majority passed the suppression laws um, for voting, right? We're definitely gonna talk about immigration, but I wanna talk about this right now, yeah. just. Okay, so um, uh, the Georgia Senate Bill 202, SB 202 uh, passed uh, last week. Yeah, it passed last week. Um, the, Georgia, the Georgia legislature is uh, majority Republican. I know that's so weird for you guys. They're like, Georgia's a blue state. No, it ain't. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the Republican majority along party lines voted for um, SB 202. Um, I want to get a list of all the things that are in it, but one of the main things that's um, uh, causing a lot of people to be like, what the heck, is that they're reducing uh, early voting times. Um, mm -hmm. In some places, they're stopping early voting at 5 p.m., when we know that people work till 5 p.m. in most cases, right? Yeah. Um, they're reducing early voting locations. Um, they are removing Sunday voting uh, in a lot of places, um, which matters because in the black community, Sunday is a, is a big time when they vote. It's called souls to the polls. They, mm -hmm. they all bust over after church and they go and vote. You take away Sunday voting, you're taking away souls to the polls. And then another thing that's getting a lot of traction around the country is the fact that um, it, it's now a misdemeanor, I think. I don't believe it's a felony. It's now a misdemeanor to give someone food or water while they're in line to vote. Uh, they call it, they, they, they're considering it electioneering, which is basically saying that if you give someone food or water while they're in line, you can convince them to vote for your candidates instead. Yeah, you know, I mean, because yes, I'm gonna stand hours in a line and then change my vote while in that line because I got a slice of pizza. So, yeah. So, so, so these are the things in that bill. Um, th th there's a few other things. Yeah, but... there, there's the one. The one that really got me was the um, where I think it was like when elections are too close to call. They can appoint their own person. Yeah, and it's just like you literally. So you're telling me the controlling party is going to be in charge of these elections? We already got a corrupt ass uh, governor who, um, who, who was over his own election and you know ended up winning, even though you know the other one probably well, won, but he just happened. You know what I'm saying? He swayed yeah. his own votes. So it's just, it, I'm really, I'm really praying that this gets um, overturned by the Supreme Court because I, I know it's going to go there because there's already class action lawsuits against it. So mm -hmm. it's definitely not going to make it in Georgia. Unless the Georgia Supreme Court, you never know, maybe maybe somebody there is liberal enough where the, they'll go ahead and say, yeah, this is unconstitutional. And then it eventually goes up to the Supreme. I'm hoping that it does go to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I'm hoping that these, even though it's a majority Republican or majority conservative, conservative. Um, Supreme Court, they still look at the facts. Because remember, we've discussed this before where it seems like the Supreme Court, it becomes about, yeah, I might be conservative, I might be liberal, but at the end of the day, it's also about making sure that we're being constitutionally correct, right? So mm -hmm. I would hope that it, the, the unconstitutional way of this law is immediately seen. I yeah. really do hope that happens. I'm hopeful that happens. Who knows though? Because this is just one of those. Yeah, they, they call it a solution without a problem. You know, they're like, you know, like people voted, so now we got to make it harder for them to vote. Um, so um, one one of the things in there is that they said the secretary of, the secretary of state will no longer chair the state election board, becoming instead a non-voting ex officio member. Member the new chair would be nonpartisan, but appointed by a majority of the state house and senate. Majority being mm -hmm. Republican. Republican. Um, the chair would not be allowed to have been a candidate. Okay participate in the political party organization or campaign or made campaign contributions for two years prior to being appointed. The law also says the governor should appoint someone in the position, or if the position becomes vacant when lawmakers are not in session. All right, so lawmakers are not in session. 
and the position becomes vacant. The next election we have is Kemp versus Abrams. If it's one of those situations where they're like, oh, we, we don't know, it's too close to call, who gets to appoint the, the head of the election board? The guy who's running in the election, Brian Kemp. He gets yeah. to pick, yeah, he can literally handpick this guy and be like, got to deliver me the victory. Yeah, I don't know how they don't see that this is a problem. You yeah, know, like, it, it's, it, it's, it's just, look, we're, we're becoming the countries that, that we always talk about having corrupt elections. We really are. We're becoming, we're becoming one of those things. And then what's going to happen is we're probably going to have a constitutional crisis one of these days. Just because it's one of those situations where, where we're allowing the, 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 we're allowing them to write their own laws. So if this was a business, this would have been broken up a long time ago. Yeah. Because it would have been looked at as a monopoly. We break up monopolies, right? Mm -hmm. This is what this is. This is a political monopoly because now you're controlling all the pieces. I pray one that we, the Supreme Court does overrule this, that this gets overruled, gets, gets thrown out and said that it's unconstitutional. And I'm hoping if that happens, it also leads to a big, uh, a big influx of these politicians getting voted out, mm -hmm. specific, sp particularly Kemp. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm hoping that even though this, they are corrupting it the way they are, I hope it allows, it brings a big influx of people. This, my recommendation is going to be, if you are going to stand in lines at a, um, what's it called, at a, um, at a voting place, I say bring a book bag yes. with food, like all your snacks, snack, drinks, and the, be prepared to be camped it, out for a whole day. They'll make it as tough as possible for you to vote. So you make yeah. it as tough as possible for them to win over yeah. this. A um, uh, couple more things I wanted to touch on um, with regards to this. Um, there are companies that are speaking out against this. Uh, Arthur Blank, um, the owner of the Falcons and Atlanta United, has spoken out against it. Um, and the, the companies talk about oh, the, the, the movie studios. I know the director James Mangold has said that he wouldn't make any movies in Georgia while this thing is in the books. The other companies talk about pulling out of Georgia. I think Coca-Cola talk... said something, no? no? Or did they say boycott Coca-Cola? They've been talking about boycott and Coca-Cola. Um, they're talking about potentially moving the all-star game for the MLB out of Atlanta. You know, so um i i, I kind of think it's a little bit of too little too late because it's already passed like what do you want yeah them because to do? when um when they were doing that whole what was it um where they were going to sign in something with the airlines mm. and it was affect the airlines and then i forgot what it was um but it was it was a law that was going to be passed i believe it was during produce time um uh, where it was going to be signed into law and it was going to do something, a, a tax on airlines or something like that, which would have caused the prices of flights to go up, right? Okay, yeah. And U United and uh, American Airlines, all of them talked about it. It was here in Georgia. And then companies did start saying, like, we might not, studio companies in particular said, we might decide that we, maybe we won't want to record in Atlanta again, you know? Yeah. And then, so, so whoever was the person who signed it, I think it was, I think it was Purdue. Mm. Exempt, uh, what's it called? Vetoed it. Just said no. Like, yeah. wait, was Purdue our governor? Maybe, yeah, he was. Nathan Deal, okay, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So, so, yeah, you might be right. It might be a little too late, but if they lose enough money, that's where, that's where Republican... The law comes in to counteract it, you know? That's what Republican elected officials care about. It's the bottom line. It's the money. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is that there is a bill in the House, sorry, a bill that passed the House that's going to the Senate, which is the For the People Act, which is supposed to extend voting rights and all that stuff. That law would supersede the Georgia law if that's it's passed. Federal. So yeah, so get rid of that filibuster, pass this thing because this yeah, Georgia John law. Manson, stop acting like a jackass. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what's happening in Georgia, and um, fun. We'll, we'll we'll keep we'll keep tabs on that because it's here, right? All right.